Shifting to new levels of life with Apostle Godson Nefani, the end time prophetic messenger. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, shall, he, he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Tell your neighbor, say, you shall see them no more forever. Tell your neighbor, say, forever. Tell your neighbor, say, forever. 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Tell your neighbor, say, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Tell your neighbor one more time, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Tell somebody behind you, say, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Tell somebody on your right hand side, say, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Can we tell three people surrounding you, say, hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them to hold their peace. Tell them to hold their peace. For the Lord will surely fight for them. Hallelujah. Mm. I want to talk to somebody tonight. And I someone that says expiration date. Tell on about say expiration date. Tell on about say expiration date. Mm. Are you ready to learn? Everything that has the beginning has an end. I'm talking about your situation, your pain, your calamity, your, your rejection, attacks that you have, you've been facing. I mean, when others, when they look at you, when they see pain, Myself on that pain, I see an expiration date. <laughs> when others see you crying tears and they feel pity for you, oh, this one is suffering. When I look at you as a man of God, I see an expiration date. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I see as God sees. I understand as God understands. Now, these are the Egyptians. The Egyptians were in a situation. God delivered them out of Egypt. Now, they passed through the wilderness. While they were in the wilderness, a lot was happening. They were hungry. Their snack packs, I mean, got finished. They didn't have food. Whereby we hear the Bible says, and God gave them manna. They didn't have water, and God gave them water from a rock. Many died there. They were losing hope. So they couldn't see future. They couldn't see themselves across or over the sea. But God in heaven knew very well that what they are experiencing they will experience it no more now God has to give a message to Moses and say Moses tell my people that the Egyptians they see today they will see them no more forever tell them about say yes I might be suffering now but this suffering I'm experiencing, I will experience it no more. In the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say, only in the name of Jesus, what I'm facing, I will face it no more. Only in the name of Jesus, what I'm lacking, I 
I will lack no more. Only in the name of Jesus, rejection I'm facing, I'll experience it no more. Somebody stand up and say, no more forever. You can sit down. Are you ready to come out of your situation? You need to believe in the word of God. There is an expiration date on your situation. Tell your neighbor, say yes. You cannot see it. But God knows better. God knows better. I, I like what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm a bread of life. In other words, not every bread is for life. Am I talking to the church here? Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. In other words, even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus is your resurrection. I prophesy everything good that died in your life. Resurrect in the name of Jesus. Your situation is expiring. Your unemployment is expiring. Your tears are expiring. Ask your neighbor, who is your Egyptian? Ask your neighbor, what is your Egyptian? Some of you, your Egyptian is unemployment. Some of you, your Egyptian is your marital problem. Some of you, your body is always sick. Some of you, your, your, your Egyptian is your dryness. No matter what you do, you are dry. Some of you, you are holding a degree. And it seems like that degree is not working for you. I'm about to shift that Egyptian. And then you will see that Egyptian no more forever. That degree will work for you in the name of Jesus. That diploma will work for you in the name of Jesus. That certificate will pay you a salary in the name of Jesus. If you hear me stand up and shout fire, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sit up. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You are here to celebrate. Because your Egyptian, your Egyptian is about to disappear. Tell your neighbor, your Egyptian is about to disappear. The Lord is, is not saying I'm going to silence them. And you will see them after three years or five years or ten years or twenty years or fifty years. The Lord is not saying I'm going to silence them. You won't see them, but your children will see them. No! The Lord is saying, you shall see them no more. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. If it is you are going to die, if it when you are in heaven, you will never see them again. Because the Lord is about to finish with them. The Lord, do you remember what happened? After God, when God says, Moses, Tell my people to move. Or move on. Tell them about move. Move by faith. Tell yourself and say, I'm not born to suffer. I'm not born to suffer like this. I'm not born to be in pain like this. Whatever Egyptian I'm facing, I will face no more forever. My children won't face them. My grandchildren won't face them. My third generation won't face them. My last generation won't face them. When we read the Bible says, and they walked towards the sea. When they arrived at the sea, the Bible says, and God opened the sea. And the Bible says the sea became dry for his people to pass through. Tell the say, my God is a miracle worker. When I read the Bible, the Bible says, when we read the Bible says, I am. The first thing that God, the, the first way that God introduced himself to Moses, he said, I am. That's his name. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the gates. I am the door. Now we see God making a way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And we saw him making a way where there was no way. In the Red Sea, we saw God making a way. 
and it became dry. I declare and I decree. If it to somebody here tonight, God is busy making a way. God is busy making a way. I don't care your situation. Now. I'm saying God is about to make a way. Stand up and say, God, make a way. When I read the Bible, the Bible says, I am Jehovah Jireh, the provider. God is the provider and God is the provision. Tell the Bible, say, God is the provider and God is the provision. Yes, Lord. He's the one who gave you, who provides that provision. He is not only provision, he is not only provider, but God is the provider and the provision. I want to talk to somebody here. God is the one who is, who is support your vision, and God is a vision giver. Everyone, the day you were born, the day you were born, your hands were closed. And everyone that day you die, your hands are open. You will never see a person dying with hands closed. When everyone dies, their hands are open. What is the meaning of this? The day you were born, your hands were closed. You were saying, I'm not empty. I am carrying something. I am pregnant. I have a vision that I'm given by the living God. The day you die, you are saying, my vision is over. My vision is accomplished. As long as you live tonight, I prophesy upon your life. You will fulfill your vision. You will fulfill your God's vision. You will fulfill your God's divine vision. In the name of Jesus, and God will provide for your vision. The word provision was created in two ways, which is provider and vision. Provider who will provide the vision. Now God is our provider and he will give you provision. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, let me take myself a picture tonight before I sleep. Because when I wake up tomorrow, I will never be the same again. Am I talking to somebody? You are going to capture your house. You are going to capture your car. Because God is going to give you another car. You are going to capture your shaker. Because God is moving you to a mansion. In the name of Jesus. Tell the number say yes. I suffered. No more. I cried. Tears of pain and confusion. But from tonight, I will cry tears of joy. No matter how a baboon ugly is, whether you give that baboon the most expensive mirror, that baboon will never see a lamb or a sheep. That baboon will see a baboon. So listen here. Jesus Christ is your mirror. When you look at your cell phone in Jesus Christ, when I look at myself in Jesus Christ, I see my tomorrow. Tell on say, I'm a promised child. You are sent for a purpose. You are sent for a reason. Tell on say, my mind is not possessed. 
but my mind is renewed when you look at yourself inside Jesus or through Jesus you will see a future because tomorrow will never be like tonight I said tomorrow will never be like tonight. As your neighbor say, neighbor, did you check your weight before you come here? Did you check your weight? When I say your weight, I'm not talking about how, how big you are, but I'm talking about your weight financially, your weight in health, your weight in vision. Because tomorrow, something will change in your life. Your vision will mature tomorrow. You will give back to what it belongs to you tomorrow. The time has come and the time is now. You will see your enemies no more forever. The time has come. You will say yes. I was a beggar. But now I'm a giver. will come well, but I used to call people and when they see that it is my call they ignore my calls the time has come people will admire you to call them because you are of no high value you are no longer wanting you are now heavy because God is renewing everything concerning your life. God is turning tables around. The Bible says, I am the gate. Go through me. The reason why many of us we are suffering is because we are no longer using a gate. Jesus. We are no longer using a door. Jesus. We are no longer walking on a way. Jesus. We are no longer knowing a truth. Jesus. Remember there is truth of man. And there is truth of Jesus. There is a way of man. There is a way of Jesus. There is an entrance of man. Are you aware that money cannot open doors for you everywhere? No matter how rich you are, there are some areas that you cannot enter. No matter how rich you are, money cannot bath you. And we as Christians we depend upon Jesus when he says yes no one will say no when he says doors are open no one will close them tell your neighbor neighbor I'm saving I am that I am who is he to you if you are sick you say what he is my healer because he is talking to you he is saying I am your healer am I talking to the church am I talking to the church tell on a person neighbor God is turning things around just for you the Egyptians you see today you will see them no more why for the Lord shall fight for you hold your peace tell the neighbor say yes I understand I've been fighting my enemies instead of holding my peace do you understand holding my peace holding my peace is when people are attacking you doing all sorts of evil don't stand with them 
don't fight them hold your peace no matter how bitter you are don't answer many people who are in trouble today they are in trouble because of their mouth from all spheres of life most people who are in trouble they are in trouble because of what they said but from tonight hold your peace the Lord will fight for you the Bible says the battle is not mine and the Bible says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities evil forces you cannot fight a witch by putting a, a weave you cannot fight a witch by carrying a Bible. You cannot fight a witch by coming to church and dance. You need to enter in the spirit. Because witches operate in the spirit. Tell another say witches operate in the spirit. When God says the battle is mine, I will fight for you. The Lord is, is not saying you must fold your hands and say, Ah, only God knows. There are many people who are down six feet who are busy saying only God knows. Many you need to enter in the spirit and hand over your battle to Jesus and the Lord will fight for you tell another person you need to report your enemies to God when you look very well let's read right there verse 10 same chapter and when pharaoh drew near the children of israel lifted up their eyes and behold the egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid and the children of israel cried out unto the lord can you see that you see that if they didn't cry out unto the Lord, the Lord was not going to answer. The Lord answered because they cried unto him. Ask your neighbor, what is your prayer? I'm seeing my enemies, they're approaching. You are seeing them, they are coming. The Bible says, and they saw them marching. Marching. Because the Egyptians don't forget. They were so proud that these ones are in our land and they are afraid of us. These are our slaves. Now when the Israelites see them marching towards them, they were full of fear. But I like one thing they did. The Bible says, they cried unto the Lord. Tell never say your help comes from the Lord. Tell never say your help comes from the Lord. When you keep quiet to your enemies, don't keep quiet for God. Talk to Him. Eleven. And they said unto Moses, You see? Now the 
problem that we have in our today's society we are complaining first before we tell God and when you come now to pray your complaints are in front of your prayer learn something here the Bible shows us that firstly they cried unto the Lord 11 and they said unto Moses now they are talking to Moses firstly they spoke with God secondly they are talking to their leader can I teach somebody tonight before you run to me as a man of God are you reporting your case to God? Don't just run to the office. Talk to God first. Be with it. From there you will come to your leader. Your Moses. And your Moses will inquire also on your behalf. Unto the Lord. Jesus. Let's grow in the Lord. We cannot drink milk every Sunday. People are coming, they found you in church. They grow just in front of you. You are, you are still drinking milk. You are not even growing. You don't even understand what is offering. You don't even grow in offering, in giving. You don't even grow. We have many dwarf Christians. They don't grow. No matter the kind of vitamins you give them. They don't grow. So before you report your case to the one who's working here as the man of God, talk to God. Tell the neighbor, say, talk to God. Tell the neighbor, say, report to God. Then you report to a man of God. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt. Now, this was a question. Has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore, as thou dealt with us, came us forth out of Egypt, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. If you remember here, yeah, there was a, there's a, someone who was testifying, talking about, oh, there was this problem. So when I come to church, it will be worse. I decided to sit at home. So there are many people who think by coming to church, they are provoking demons. Let me tell you, whether you like it or not, demons are your enemies. And don't even think that if you are not beating them, they are not beating you. Don't even think that. I remember one day we were still down there in GNA 357. Now, I said to people, begin to shout fire to this demon. And another lady was so scared. I saw her doing fire. I say, shout fire to this Satan. Fire. I say, hey, Mama, why are you behind others? You are just doing what's happening? She said, Ah, Muruti Nakia Muchava Satan. Pella Akichella Mulo Munchuta will not Naki Chalo Munchenda Utan Latte La Gontu. Whether you fight Satan or not, he is your enemy. Satan will never be your friend. Number two, Satan doesn't love people. Ah, even his demons, he doesn't love them. 
in, in, in fact, there is no love in the kingdom of darkness. Don't be deceived. Because the Bible says God is love. So, how can Satan have God? Because God is love. When Satan brush you and say, uh, I love you, okay? He is not saying I love you. He is saying I love you weak and I want to take it away. He is focusing on what he is looking for. Not to you. Satan is after souls. Souls are like diamonds. That's why you see even today people are doing illegal mining because that is the most expensive thing. That is why if a rumor can move around that God's son never has diamond, you will see police everywhere here searching for me. Say, we hear that you have a diamond. Where did you get it? That is what Satan is searching for. Satan is after your soul. Tell your neighbor, say, Satan, Satan is, after is after your soul. Now look at the Egyptians. The Egyptians say, we told you, just let us alone so that we may serve this Egyptian. Now, the Israelites were ready to submit to the enemies the rest of their lives. Somebody say, oh, DB. Not me. Somebody say, over my dead body. Not me. Tell your neighbor, say, oh, DB. I won't serve Satan. I won't surrender to Satan. I gave my life to Jesus. They were ready to save because of bread, because of food. Look at look at the reason here. Verse eleven, because there were no graves in Egypt, you see, because of graves, so that they'll be buried in a decent way. They don't want to be buried in the wilderness. What a foolish thing. I need us to pray tonight. We are praying for ourselves. We are praying for South Africa. We are praying for Africa. That the Egyptians we are seeing, the xenophobia we are seeing, we shall see it no more. Tell the say we are holding the key. Our prayer can shift it away. How many will believe that? God will hear your prayer. God will hear my prayer. Be our guest every service day at Massey Sevenza Comprehension School, Sports Ground, Corner 6 Liberia and Benin Street, Gianni Section, Tembisa, Houteng, South Africa.